One of the bigger challenges to winter hiking is keeping your feet warm and comfortable, especially if you're out in those cold temperatures for a prolonged period of time. Proper winter footwear is essential. But there's another challenge that you may not be considering, and that is foot sweat. Believe it or not, your feet are the second sweatiest part of your body after your armpits. Eww. This means your feet produces a considerable amount of moisture over a course of a winter hike, especially if you're working hard. All that moisture is absorbed first into your socks and then your footwear. Drying out your socks when you winter camping is fairly easy, but trying to dry out a pair of boots that is wet inside can be very difficult. In this episode, we're gonna look at how to overcome and conquer those challenges, and that is with vapor barrier socks. <laughs> Now years ago I did a winter backpacking trip where I was in the wilderness for many days where the temperatures were well below freezing. And after hiking for a long period of time, not knowing that my feet were sweating, the next morning when I woke up and I tried to put my boots on, and yes I had them as wide open as possible to air them out, I could not get them on. They were so stiff. With the moisture being in there, they became like a block of ice while pushing and shoving. In the process, I broke the little loop on the back of my boot that gives me leverage to slide my feet in. Now on this trip, I didn't have any camp shoes because I could have put those on and boiled some water and put them in the Nalgene bottles and stick them in my boots to warm them up. And that's a good trick to do and that works really well. Now the worst part wasn't waking up in the morning and putting on those boots, but as the days went by, the moisture in my boots kept building up and eventually they became soaked. And not even the boots were wet, but also my socks. And when I was in camp, when you had that downtime, my feet started to get cold. So what I did is I put a thick pair of wool socks on, stood on a log, hauled my boots over the fire trying to dry them out. And that wasn't effective. And I knew after this trip, I had to do something different. I came up with some different options. And the best one that seemed the most logical was vapor barrier socks. And after trying them out, I found out not only are they effective, but they're a game changer on those long trips. Now vapor barrier socks are really just vapor barrier liners that are non-breathable. And this is important, non-breathable material that does not permit the transmission of moisture through it. So that means you can use items like a trash bag or one that was really popular when I was a kid is a plastic bread bag. But the logic of the plastic bread bag was not to keep the moisture from going out, but to keep the moisture from coming in as a kid walking in those sloppy, wet, slushy snow. And another one that you can use for a vapor barrier liner is the Reynolds oven bags. Now all these are very inexpensive and they're great to test out to try out this concept. But I have to tell you, they're not very durable and they tear very easily. Now if you're going to be on a winter hike or a trek for multiple days, then you want to get a pair of vapor barrier socks. You don't want to rely on the durability of those plastic bags. And the ones that I use is from a company called Rab. They are made out of a waterproof 70D polyurethane coated nylon fabric. They have a built-in elastic ankle section and a draw cord, top closure with the cord clamp to help trap the moisture in. And it also comes with a little handy dandy stuff sack. Not only is that little stuff sack large enough to hold those vapor barrier socks, but also my golden toe dress socks, which I'll be talking about shortly. The weight is two and a quarter ounce or 60 grams. And on the inside, all the seams are taped to prevent moisture from leaking out. You may think that trapping moisture next to your feet will lead to a soaky, swampy, skin pruning environment where sweat just pours out of your feet, but that's not so. 
That is not what happens. You see, your skin is constantly producing sufficient moisture to keep it adequately moist and hydrated. But when it senses that it's adequately moist, it ceases perspiration because it's no longer needed. And that's exactly what happens inside your vapor barrier socks. Your feet actually start sweating less because the environment around them is sufficiently moist. Now when using vapor barrier socks, because of the plastic material loose fitting and holding the moisture inside, they can be a little uncomfortable. To provide comfort in those sweat bags, I like to use a thin pair of dress socks and my favorite are the gold toes. Now let me show you how to use this new system and how to put them on. First you put on a pair of nylon socks. Make sure they form nicely over your feet. Then put on the vapor barrier socks. Though they are a little baggy, try to fit them on your feet the best you can. Now the next step is critical. Most people put on a thick pair of wool socks. Unless they have a boot that's two sizes up and there's ample room and it doesn't restrict circulation, then go ahead. But I think it's overkill because you're gonna have three pairs of socks on and I believe it's really gonna make your feet uncomfortable and restrict circulation. I believe a light to a medium pair of wool socks would work the best to keep your feet warm when you're on the move. Again, this is very important. You do not want a tight fit in your boot. This is counterproductive and your feet will not only be numb, but they'll also be cold. Please do not make this mistake. Your boot should be loose fitting, and especially in that toe box. Then next put on a light or medium wool sock. Make sure the vapor barrier sock protrudes above the wool sock. Then tighten the toggle down the draw cord. Then last, slide on your boots. Now one thing I have to say about the Vapor Barrier Socks, when you start moving at first, they'll feel a little weird or cramped inside, but after you start going, the feeling will go away, and in a short time, you'll notice you don't even have them on. But now when you get to camp and you have everything set up, you got the firewood and all your chores are done, then I start to take off those vapor barrier socks. And the first thing I'll notice, the inside of my boots are really dry. My wool socks are dry. And when I take off the vapor barrier socks, I'll notice my feet are a little moist with those dress socks. And what you want to do is you want to turn them inside out and hang them up to dry. and also dry out those dress socks. Now the beauty of those dress socks made out of nylon is they dry so quick. And I suggest you get a pair made out of lac material because when you put it in the sunlight, they dry so quickly and you'll be amazed how fast they'll dry no matter how cold the temperatures are. Now it's time to put on those thick pair of wool socks and enjoy the camp life. And the next morning when you wake up, you'll notice that the vapor barrier socks will have a little bit of frost on the outside. Just wipe them off, turn them inside right, and start the process over again for that day's hike and adventure. Now before I end this episode, there's a sixth grade student of mine that I promised to give a shout out. And his name is Cash and he's starting a new YouTube channel. So here's a shout out to you, Cash. Now I hope you guys found this episode to be helpful and insightful. And if you have any questions or comments, please write them down below. I love to hear from you. This is the Marine. Thank you for watching and God bless. Mm -hmm.